The fourth beatitude, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Sa Tagalog, mapapalad ang mga nagugutom at nauuhaw sa katuwiran, sapagkat sila ay bubusugin. And uh, in Luke chapter 12 verse 17, the rich, fool, the rich fool said within himself, What shall I do because I have no place to bestow my crops? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns, and I will build greater barns, and there will I bestow all my crops and all my goods. This rich fool wasn't about to share them with anybody, although he has excess. He was just going to pile them up, accumulate them. And I will say to my soul, the rich fool says, Soul thou hast much goods, look at that, Soul thou hast much goods laid up for many years. And take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. The rich fool was hungry for possession, physical possession, and accumulation of possession, accumulation of wealth. You know what God said to this rich fool in Luke chapter 12? You fool, this night your soul shall be required of thee. Ibig sabihin, ngayong gabi, mamamatay ka. Then the, who shall those be which you have provided. Kanin mapupunta yung mga maiwan mo? In our study tonight, blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, after God's righteousness. Jesus used this analogy that food and water are necessities. And so is righteousness for our spiritual life. You and I need God's righteousness like what we need, physical food and water for our physical life. Our physical life de depends on food and water. However, our spiritual life depends on God's righteousness, true righteousness, not fake. You can't live physically without food and water, that's a given. And you'll never live spiritual without God's righteousness. So righteousness is not an optional supplement or it's not a supplemental vitamins for our physical life, but it's a spiritual necessity. Think of the physical aspect and maybe it will give you an idea of the intensity that the words of Jesus have here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. History tells us that famine came to Rome in 436 BC and it caused thousands of people to, to literally throw themselves into Tiber water and drown themselves rather than die of starvation. Mas gusto pa nila na mamatay silang nalulunod kaysa mamatay sila sa gutom. Famine struck England in 1005 AD and all Europe suffered famine in years 879 and 1162 AD. And even in the 19th century, with some advance, advancement in technology and commerce, hunger strikes Russia, China, India, and even Ireland, so that masses of humanity died. Even in today's 21st century, parts of Africa and India and other third world country, thousands die of malnutrition, Thousands die of starvation and some die of accompanying diseases, just like what we have right now. We have COVID-19. Hundreds more perishes in parts of Latin America. Hunger, starvation is like war and pestilence. They kill and they consume people. So in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus here is saying that the real thing that a man needs is God's righteousness, not the physical aspects of life. Anybody coming into my kingdom, Jesus says, and anybody living in my kingdom has a great appetite and thirst that as a man does for food and water. And yes, while we are here on earth, we need to eat food and water for physical life. Unsaved people do have their own ways in satisfying their, their hunger and thirst. Unsaved people probably have thirst for happiness and hunger for fulfillment 
recognition, affirmation, but they seem to find it in the wrong places. So the Apostle Peter compares the unsaved people to a dog. A dog that goes back and licks its vomit. Nakakita na po ba kayo ng aso? Napagsuka niya, maya-maya, babalikan niya, tapos ililik niya at kakainin niya yung vomit. Kadiri. And then the Apostle Peter also compares the unsaved people to a pig. A pig goes back and wallows in its mire. Kahit paniguan mo siya, pabanguhan mo siya, lagyan mo siya ng laso, after that, the pig goes back to mire. So the world is trying to feed and save people of what is not nourishing and that which cannot fulfill the need. They are all temporary. But in reality, the heart of every person created in the image of God, believer or unbeliever, was created with a hunger for God in our spiritual life. But man tries to satisfy our hunger for God with all these false things, <coughs> with all the garbage of this world. Remember the, remember the, the prodigal son? Man's, man's heart hungers to be fed and he feds on swine's food. First, the, the prodigal son collected his part of the inheritance while he was still alive. And then the loving father pro provided to him. But eventually, this prodigal son is just like a dog that goes back to and lick its vomit. Men do not seek the bread of life. They seek what the scripture says, that which is not bread. And, and, and Jesus Christ offered himself as a living bread. Where do we find it? In John chapter 6 verse 35 to 51. Because Jesus knew people were hungry, physically hungry. And at the same time, spiritually hungry. That's why Jesus himself offered as a living bread. Jesus also offered himself as a living water in the spiritual sense. Although we, we also need physical food and physical water, spiritual water is what we need. The Old Testament prophet Jeremiah said it vividly in Jeremiah 2.13. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewn me out of cisterns. What kind of cistern? Broken cisterns that can hold no water. In other words, God has made man with a thirst and hunger for, for him. But man in general refuses the well of living water, the bread of life, that makes himself broken cistern and can even hold water. It is sad commentary to see a lot of people hunger and thirst for the wrong things. What are those wrong things? The things that are eating their time, temporal in nature, no eternal or lasting value. <coughs> the, the, these people are hungry and thirst for happiness and and, and fulfillment and they're trying to fill it themselves by themselves they this this these people try to fill it fill it with themselves with self-indulgent happiness self-made happiness temporary pleasures possessions power popularity fame and praise again in in Luke chapter 15 verse Verse 11 to 32, the prodigal son, the story of long for the possession, long for earthly pleasure, and freedom to do what he wants to do in his own way, in his own time. That's what's embedded when he collected the portion of his inheritance, along with many implications. The prodigal son longed to possess, and he longed for popularity of a riotous life. But eventually, man ran, his money ran out, and he was hungry. Finally, he realizes and says, How many of my father's servants have, been, have bread enough to spare? And why am I doing this? That I am eating with a pig, with a swine. So after realization, 
after the reality, he went back to his father's house and he was given a feast, to make the story short. And that, that feast is a picture of a spiritual feast. The world in its riotous living tries to fill itself with husk of the swine, the hogs of the swine. And they try to fill itself with the pleasure of sin. And it comes up absolutely empty because they are all temporary. And those who respond to the Spirit of God come running back to the Father. And there is a feast to fill up the empty heart, the longing of the soul, to fill up the hungry soul and the thirsty soul. In 1 John chapter 2, the Apostle John warns us that you cannot get satisfied in the world. You notice you have experience and even your friends. However you work two or three jobs, long hours, you cannot get satisfaction. First, you want to buy a television, this inches, this 65 <coughs> and then eventually you don't like it because of blah 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 and then you buy another one which is bigger than that you bought a house and five years after that you bought another house man has no satisfaction that's why the apostle john in first john chapter 2 love not the world neither the things that are in the world what is in the world and john cap encapsulates it in three aspects the last of the flesh Yung nagpapaganda sa iyo, the last of the eyes, yung bumubusog na yung mga mata, and the pride of life, what people will say to you. That is in the world. The last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life. <coughs> and if you look at it closely, all of this will not last. They are all temporary. They don't have eternal value. So based on what we are studying right now, what are you hungry for? What are you thirsty for? Are you hungering and thirsting for happiness? The truth? Pleasure? Prestige? Popularity? Fame? Praise? Maybe possessions and more possessions. How do, you, how do you feed your hunger and thirst? How do you achieve those happiness, pleasure, prestige, popularity, fame, power, and possessions? Are you like the prodigal son? <coughs> or are you like the dog who licks your own vomit or a pig that wallows in your own mire? Or maybe you're looking on the wrong source the wrong place the answer to the question what are you hunger and thirsting for manifest the reality of who you are the answer you get to that question will determine whether you belong to the kingdom of god or you're not because the one who belongs to the kingdom of god are hungering and thirst after God's righteousness. May I repeat that? Those who belong in God's kingdom hunger and thirst for God's righteousness. Hang on a second. Why did Jesus Christ put this on the fourth aspect of Beatitudes? Let's tie them together. How do they connect? The first one in verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What does it mean? It means poor in spirit is morally bankrupt. Morally bankrupt describes as the recognition that we are destitute of any righteous thing. It's the recognition that before God we stand absolutely strictly naked and empty. It's a recognition when we've added up all we possess in life physically, they are nothing. And morally bankrupt, poor in spirit, is a recognition that we cannot help ourselves and we are hopeless and we are sinful. Then there goes, blessed are they that mourn in verse 4. This is the response to the recognition when you and I see ourselves 
as broken in our spirit and we are mourning. We are mourning about what? We are mourning over our moral bankruptcy, our sins. So that in verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek. Why? Because meekness says, Look at me in comparison with God. I am nothing. That is what meekness says. Why? Because meekness is humility. Meekness is when you and I see our sin and our and we are broken and we are mourning and we will take a, a place of meekness before God. You see now the, 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 the progression of the Beatitudes? In your meekness, in our meekness before God, we realize that the only hope we need is God and His righteousness. We need to hunger and thirst for God's righteousness because God's righteousness is the real righteousness, the real truth that lasts. If you have been broken in your spirit and are overwhelmed with your sinfulness and you mourn over your sinfulness, then you look up to recognize the holiness, the righteousness of God. The response should be that we hunger and thirst for God's righteousness. So the person who has no hunger for righteousness of God has no part in God's kingdom. Masakit po yun. The person who has no hunger and thirst for God's righteousness has no part or do not belong into God's kingdom. Yeah, you may have religion, you may have tradition, you may have ceremonies, but you do not belong to God's kingdom. Listen carefully. This observation, our society or the world pursue what? Our society and, and the world pursue money, materialism, popularity, fame, pleasure. Why? Because they rooted out of selfishness, greed, and pride. Because these are all not our need. They are just want. Need and want are two different things. God will provide our need, not our wants. The sad part of it is even though the United States grants us the pursuit of happiness in our declaration, people don't find it. People, most people, some people in the United States, a greater number of people in the United States are unhappy. Even though they are in the United States compared with, with other people of the world. Why? Because People did not find happiness in the right way. Why? In the first place, they define happiness in the wrong way. So if a person defines happiness in the wrong way, therefore he cannot find the true happiness. Happiness, the, the, the world and society will say, happiness is when you have more money, when you take all pleasure, when you eat all the food, when you are in power. When, when you have a lot of TikTok followers or, or Facebook likes or, or Instagram or, or happiness is having material things, masaya ka ba na marami kang followers? Masaya ka ba na marami kang pera? Na masaya ka ba na ikaw ay mayor or, or vice mayor or governor? Are you really happy with all of this? Jesus' beatitude says that blessedness or happiness, based on this, blessedness or happiness is equal to brokenness in spirit, mourning over our sin, being meek or humble, hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Opposite of what the world and what the society is telling us. The parallel passage of, of Matthew is in Luke chapter 6. When Luke wrote this, Blessed are you who hunger now. Wow. Blessed are you who hunger now. Desire for righteousness is characterized, is to characterize our life in the now, not in the future. Now and in the rest of our earthly existence. Why? Because happiness depends on the object of our hungering and our thirsting. 
So, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled, or they will be satisfied. So, what is the object of our spiritual hunger and our spiritual thirsting? I would like to offer to you two. The object of our spiritual hunger and thirst is salvation for unbeliever and sanctification for believer. May I repeat that? The object of that instruction, blessed are they who hunger and thirst, is salvation for unbeliever, sanctification, or a life of holiness for believers. For unbeliever, salvation. During the time, the listener, the Jews, the Jewish greatest obstacle for receiving salvation or good news was their self-righteousness. Akala ng mga Hudyo dahil mga rabay sila at marami silang alam sa Torah, sa Old, sa Old Testament. And dahil may magaganda silang mga lugar at marami silang parapernalya. They thought that they are assured of heaven. They didn't know that the greatest obstacle to receiving salvation was self-righteous. Yung akala mo, matuwid ka. Nagmamarunong, nagmamalinis. Confidence in their own purity, in their own holiness, which they imagined was created by good works. They think that they are assured of heaven because they were God's chosen race. They were the people who were the keepers of the law, the interpreters of the law. However, when the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, told them that the way to salvation is by being poor in spirit, mourning over your sin, being meek, and hungering and thirst for God's righteousness, <coughs> they disagreed. Because this replaces their, their, de their dependence on their religion, their dependence on their rituals, their dependence on their traditions, their dependence on their ceremonies, and their good works, and their feelings of their perceptions of self-righteousness. And that is why the Lord Jesus Christ put forth that Beatitudes for salvation for the unbelievers, sanctification for the believers. The object is to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grow in the righteousness received by trusting Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Sanctification, that growth is sanctification. That is the mark of a true Christian. So if you say that you are a believer and you are not hungering and thirst for righteousness, then you check whether you are truly connected or you are truly a follower of Christ or just a follower of religion and not having a relationship. Philippians 1, 9-10, the Apostle Paul prayed for the, Philippia, for the believers at Philippi. What was the prayer all about? Philippians 1, 9 to 10. That your love may abound more and more in knowledge, in depth, and insight. Wow! Is your love for God abounding more and more? Lumalago po ba? Dumadami. So that you may be able to discern what is best and pure. May be able to discern what is blameless for the day of Christ. A wonderful prayer. I hope that will be our prayer. That Lord God, that my love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. That I may be able to discern what is best. That I may be able to discern what is pure and what is blameless. And that is why when we are making decision, we have to spend more time in prayer, more in our knees. And yes, we have to do our homework in, in gathering facts and data and studying and analyzing, comparing. But the final decision making should be bathed in prayer. What will be the result of our hungering and thirst for righteousness? The Lord Jesus Christ says, you will be satisfied. You will be fed. You know the Greek word for fed or satisfied? Kuradzo was frequently used for feeding animals. Being satisfied is just like an animal being fed. 
until they wanted nothing more. Hanggang magsawa na siya, pakainin mo siya ng pakainin, hanggang sa <coughs> titigil na siya ng pagkain kasi satisfied na siya. They were allowed to eat and they were com until they are completely satisfied. So the giving of satisfaction is God's work, not man. Our part is to seek His righteousness and God's part is to satisfy our longing. The person who genuinely hungers and thirsts for righteousness finds it to satisfy that he wants more and more of God. So God satisfies those who genuinely hunger and thirst for Him and His righteousness. Are you truly hungering and thirst for righteousness? How do you know? Before I answer that, God's satisfaction of our thirst and filling up our hungry soul has been demonstrated in Psalm 107 verse 9. Psalm 107 verse 9, God satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. In Psalm 34 verse 10, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Ang ganda po ano? The lions may grow weary and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lacks no good thing. What about Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then move back in verse, verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Wow. What an analogy. Jeremiah 31, 14 assure the Israelites that in, in the coming millennial kingdom, my people will be satisfied with my goodness. Imagine that. My people will be satisfied with God's goodness, declares the Lord. And in the New Testament, John 4, 14, Jesus Christ told the Samaritan woman at the well in Sychar that whoever drinks the water that I will give, remember that? Whoever drinks of the water that I will give him uh, shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing to eternal life. Could you imagine that? Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If the answer is yes, you have drank the water that Jesus Christ gave and you shall never thirst. And that becomes a spring, a well of springing in eternal life and to the <coughs> and to the crowds at Capernaum many of whom had been had experienced the feeding of the 5,000 when he uses five loaves of bread and two fishes and Jesus said to them I am the bread of life I am the living bread of life he who comes to me will no longer hunger hindi po ibig sabihin eh, physical hunger, spiritual hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst, hindi na siya mauuhaw. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the real bread of life, the real wellspring of water. Let's close in this question. How do you and I have a genuine hunger and thirst for God's righteousness? How do I know I have a genuine hunger and thirst for righteousness? Paano ko malalaman na I have a genuine hunger and thirst for righteousness? Are you ready? First is satisfaction with God. And second, dissatisfaction with yourself. Satisfaction with God meaning you crave for the Word of God. You spend time reading the Word of God. You meditate upon the word of God. This book of the law shall not depart up out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. <coughs> this is the basic spiritual food for our soul. A hungry man does not have to be begged to eat. Hindi ka pipilitin ng Panginoon kumain. But the more we seek God's righteousness, the more we spend time reading the word, the more we spend time meditating understanding, studying the word, the more we will want to feast and devour the scripture. 
Feeding on God's word increases our appetite for God's righteousness on a daily basis. And finally, dissatisfaction with self. The person who is satisfied with his own self-righteousness and pleasing his own self will not seek God's righteousness. So if for some reason, everything you do and everything you plan is for yourself and you have nothing spent with God, then you are not genuinely hungering and thirsting for righteousness. There's still time. Repent just like the prodigal son and run to God.